So let's bring this all together and take a look at this polynomial function here, x cubed minus 4x squared plus 9x minus 10. So this is a, look at the degree, a third degree polynomial. So we're looking for three zeros. Now we've talked about sometimes there might be real zeros, sometimes there might be imaginary zeros, but there should be three total zeros. And so we can find zeros directly from the table. If we look, we're looking for where y is zero, where the output is zero. And we see that we have right here at x equals two, the output is zero. So that means that we have a x intercept here, or this is where a zero is. So we have x equals two is a zero. And so let's write that in the paragraph here in the sentence. So they have x equals two is a real zero because we're looking at where y is equal to zero. So using the idea of that factor theorem, since x equals two is a zero, then x minus two opposite sign is a factor. So with all that being said, we can use division, synthetic division or long division, let's use synthetic division to find what the rest of the zeros are and what the rest of the factors are. So what we have is two is what we're dividing by, that's the zero, and then we write out all of the coefficients. So we have the x cubed coefficient, which is one, we have the x squared coefficient, which is negative four, we have the x to the one coefficient, which is nine, and then we have the constant coefficient, which is negative 10. So we do the synthetic division, we carry the one down, and then we multiply the one by two, we multiply the one by the zero, so we have this is two, we add negative four with two, that's negative two, multiply this by the zero, which is two, so this is negative four, we do nine plus negative four, this is five, we multiply that with the zero, which is two, so two times five is 10, so negative 10 plus 10 is zero. So that's good, we got a zero remainder, or we got no remainder, which is what we want. And so because we have an, a zero remainder or no remainder, that means that we can write out this result as a factor. So remember, starting from the back, this is x to the zero, x to the one, and x squared. These are the reduced degrees of the polynomial. And so the result we have here is x squared, and then minus 2x, and then plus 5. This is the result we got after we did the division. And so what we're really looking for to see the zeros, we want to see what does this factor to? Well, if we look at 5, we want to see what two things multiply to 5 that add to negative 2. Well, unfortunately, there isn't anything nice that multiplies to 5 that adds to negative 2, because 5 is prime, so that means its only factors are 1 and 5. And we can't do 1 plus 5 and get negative 2 because we'd get 6. And if we do negative 1 times negative 5, that would add to negative 6. So th this doesn't factor nicely. No nice factor. So we're going to use the quadratic formula. x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. So let's bring this up here and do that. And keep in mind what our different a, b, and c is here. So a is equal to 1, b is equal to negative 2, and c is equal to 5. So we're going to use this to plug into the quadratic formula. So we have x is equal to negative b, which b is negative 2. So this is negative 2 plus or minus the square root of b squared, so negative 2 squared, minus 4 times a, which is 1, times c, which is 5. And so what we end up getting, this is divided by 2a, so 2 times 1. This is equal to negative, negative 2, that's positive 2, and then plus or minus. On the inside here, we end up getting negative 16 over 2. And so negative 16, 16 is actually a perfect square, 
square root of 16 is 4. But we have a negative on the inside, so now that means we have imaginary numbers. So this is equal to 2 plus or minus 4i, because square root of 16 is 4, and then square root of negative 1 is i. So this is over 2. And we can actually reduce this a little bit further, and we can say this is equal to factor of 2 out front. This is 1 plus or minus 2i, all divided by 2. And now that we have that factor out front, we can divide those factors and so what we're left with is 1 plus or minus 2i. So this is what x is equal to. These are the zeros. And so the final result, the zeros that we have are the one that we found that we divided by, that was x equals 2, and the other ones are 1 plus 2i, but then also 1 minus 2i. These are the conjugate pairs. Imaginary zeros always come in those conjugate pairs. And so what the factors are, let's write that off to the side. The factors, we can write it as x minus 2, that's one factor. But then the 1 plus 2i and the 1 minus 2i, we don't really want to write those as their own individual factors. So we would just write it as the x squared minus 2x plus Five. That's the best way to write the factors. So to summarize what we've done so far, we can find zeros from polynomials by looking at the graph and finding the x-intercepts. We can look at the table and find where y equals zero or where there's a sign change or a sign change in y, because remember that's where we're looking at if we go from positive to negative or negative to positive, you have to cross zero at some point. And we can also work backwards from the zeros that we find from the table of the graph to create the factors and use synthetic division or long division to divide or factor and reduce the polynomial to a quadratic. And with quadratics, we then know that we can solve those with factoring or we can solve quadratics using the quadratic formula. And when we solve using the quadratic formula, sometimes we might get imaginary or non-real zeros and those always appear in those conjugate pairs. And those conjugate pairs will always look like this. You have a plus b i and then a minus bi. So it's always that plus or minus in between like the adding or subtracting of the real part and the imaginary part. So some other scenarios that we will have are that we could be given some pieces of information about the polynomial and then we could try to write out what the polynomial is. So for this one, we're supposing that we know that a polynomial function, call it p of x, has the zeros x equals negative 3 and x equals 6 plus 2i. So we could write out what the factors are. The factors that we have are x plus 3. That's one factor. And then we also have the factor, well, we would write it as x minus the 0, which is 6 plus 2i. So keep in mind here that when we have x equals r, is a zero, then that means that we have the factor x minus r. So in this case, this is the r, the entire 6 plus 2i. So we have x minus 6 plus 2i. And if 6 plus 2i is a zero, then you have the conjugate pair x equals 6 minus 2i is also a zero. And so that means we also have this factor here, x minus 6 minus 2i. And so this is really x minus 6 minus 2i, and then also x minus 6 plus 2i. And so we can very carefully write these factors together, multiply them all out to write out what the original polynomial is, because that's our goal is to write out what this polynomial is. So to write this out, we have p of x is equal to the factors listed out x plus 3 
times x minus 6 minus 2i times x minus 6 plus 2i. So now here we have to be very careful and diligent in how we do this multiplication. So we're going to be multiplying the x minus 6 minus 2i with the x minus 6 plus 2i. And remember, this is just one big, long distributing. So we distribute the x in, we distribute the negative 6 in, and then we also distribute the negative 2i in. And so we just have to do this piece by piece and just be careful with combining like terms and just staying organized. So we have p of x is equal to, we'll leave the x plus 3 out front. And then what we have here is, let's distribute the x in. So we have, I'll put big brackets here to write it all out. x times x is x squared. And then x times negative 6 is negative 6x. X. x times 2i is plus 2ix. And then we have, distribute the 6 in. So negative 6 times x, that's negative 6x. X. Negative 6 times negative 6, that's plus 36 negative 6 times 2i, that's negative 12i. And then we distribute the negative 2i in. So negative 2i times x, that's negative 2ix. And then negative 2i times negative 6, that's plus 12i. And then we have negative 2i times 2i is negative 4i squared. We'll close the big bracket there. And so remember that we have negative 4i squared. i squared is negative 1, so this is negative 4 times negative 1, which is positive 4. And so that will save us some time here in writing these lines. So combining like terms, let's carry everything down. So we have p of x is equal to x plus 3, and then we have times x squared. There's no other x squared term, so we'll leave x squared on its own. Negative 6x. So we're looking at the x term. So the terms with just x, no i. So we have a negative 6x here and also a negative 6x here. And there's no other terms with just x. So that's negative 12x. And then we have 2ix. So we have a 2ix here. And then looking for anywhere else, we have an ix. And we have a negative 2ix here. So those actually cancel out or add to 0. And then next, going down the line, we have 36, which is just a number with no variables or no other terms on it. So this is 36 here. Looking for anywhere else, we see just a number. Well, we actually have plus 4 here. So 36 plus 4, that's plus 40. And then keep looking, we have negative 12i here and positive 12i here. So those add to zero and so that's all that we have left over is the x squared minus 12x plus 40. And then so from here we have this x plus 3 out front, put the parentheses around it. Now we still have to distribute one more time because we want to get everything expanded out as much as we can. So we distribute the x in and then we distribute the 3 in. So what we have here is p of x is equal to distribute the x in, so we have x times x, that's x cubed, x times negative 12x, that's negative 12x squared, x times 40 is plus 40x, and then the next part is we distribute the 3 in, so 3 times x squared is plus 3x squared, 3 times negative 12x is negative 36x, 3 times 40 is 120, so that's plus 120 there. And then combine all the like terms, we have p of x is equal to, let's see what we have. We have x cubed, there's no other x cubed term, so carry that down. We have negative 12x squared. We also have 3x squared, so that's negative 9x squared. We have 40x, and we also have negative 36x, so that is plus 4x. And then we don't have any other constant terms, so we just leave 120 as is. And so this is the expression or the polynomial all expanded out. Now one thing to mention here is that this doesn't say anything about a leading coefficient, so there t could technically be a leading coefficient out here. So we should put a little a 
out front on all these parts. And I actually put this all in parentheses here. We should have an A out front because we're not told anything about the leading coefficient. So we don't know what that leading coefficient is, but this is pretty darn close to as far as we can get to writing out what expanded polynomial is or multiplying all those factors out. And so in some cases, we might be told even some more information. Say, take that this polynomial that we were just looking at, and we could be given a specific point on the polynomial. In particular, we could be given the y-intercept. And so we could be given the y-intercept is 0, 060, there should be a comma there. And so when we do 0, 060, when we have this information, we can plug this into the polynomial that we have. So when we plug it in, what we have here is that x is equal to 0 and y is equal to 60. So let's plug that into what we have here. So we have 60 is equal to that a out front. We don't know what that is. So this is a times 0 cubed minus 9 times 0 squared plus 4 times 0 plus 120. So we plugged in 0 for all of the x values. And then you see what we have left over. Well, on the inside here, 0 cubed is 0. 9 times 0 is 0. 4 times 0 is 0. So all we have left over is the 120. So this gives us 60 is equal to a times 120. And then to get a by itself, we divide by 120. So that cancels out, divides to 1, divide by 120 here. And we can actually reduce this down to 1 half. So we get that a is equal to 1 half, which means that we can finally write out this entire polynomial as is without any unknowns or anything like that. We can write this as p of x is equal to the a is 1 half, and then the rest of it is the x cubed minus 9x squared plus 4x plus 120. Give that a big, nice box because that was a lot of work and a lot of steps to get to that point there. And so we were able to take just very minimal information. We were given only two of the zeros, negative three and six plus two i. And then we know that six plus two i has the conjugate pair of six minus two i. So we wrote out those factors and then we multiply them all together, expanded everything, combined like terms, had the a out front, and then we found that a using that one point, the y-intercept that they gave us. So we plugged that y-intercept in for the x and the y, and then we were able to solve for a, and then we could just put everything together, and we got the polynomial function here. And so we can do this again, and this actually is introducing a new terminology here. Multiplicity means that there's two of the same zero. So this means two of the x equals negative 3. So there's two x equals negative 3 zeros. And so what that really means is that if you write it as a factor, the factor is x plus 3 squared. So whenever we write out the factors, if you see the exponent here, this is the multiplicity. And the other part that we have is that x equals 4i is a 0. So x equals negative 4i is also a 0. So to summarize this, we have the x equals 4i is a 0, x equals negative 4i is a 0. We have these two zeros, which are really the same 0 of x equals negative 3. And, or you could write that as x plus 3 squared. And so what we have here is that this polynomial, call it p of x again, p of x is equal to, we have the a out front, we don't know what that leading coefficient is, times x plus 3 squared. And then we also have x minus 4i and x plus 4i as those factors. But really what this is, is remember we can distribute this out and see what we get. So when we distribute this out, we have p of x is equal to a times x plus 3 squared. And then distribute the x, we have x times x 
that's x squared, distribute the x to the 4i, that is plus 4ix, distribute the negative 4i, so negative 4i times x, that's negative 4ix, distribute the negative 4i to the 4i, so that's negative 16 times i squared, and remember that here this is negative 16 times negative 1, which remember negative 16 times negative 1, we get that because i squared is negative 1, so this is positive 16. And what we have at the end of the day is we have a plus 4ix, negative 4ix, those add to 0, so we're just left with the x squared and the 16. So this all factors down or expands out nicely to p of x is equal to a times x plus 3 squared times what's left over is x squared plus 16.